Welcome to the African History Network show. It is Tuesday, March 1st, 2022, and we are live broadcasting right here on 9, 10 a.m. The Superstation, the Future Radio. I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotep. We're also broadcasting on our Facebook fan page, The African History Network, The African History Network, and our YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotep, I-M-H-O-T-E-P. Well, um, I was, I saw a story this morning dealing with, um, the well actually yes uh actually uh uh this happened on monday monday february 28th uh you know we've talked about the emmett till uh anti-lynching bill we've talked about that uh here before on this show and the emmett till anti-lynching bill passed the house of representatives on monday february 28th by vote of uh the vote was 422 to 3. 422 to 3. It got overwhelming support, o- overwhelming bipartisan support from both Republicans and Democrats. So we're going to talk a little bit about this bill and the significance of it. Now it's headed to the Senate. We know that in uh it was about June of 2020, the bill was blocked in the Senate by Senator Rand Paul uh of Kentucky. And Senator Rand Paul helped to craft this new bill, uh, this incarnation of the Emmett Till uh, anti-lynching bill. And he now supports the bill. We're going to talk about this as well. OK. And so it's expected to pass the Senate now uh, in this incarnation. Also, uh, we'll continue our coverage of what's going on in uh, Ukraine and the uh, Russian invasion of Ukraine. We know this is day number six of the uh, Russian invasion of Ukraine. Uh, So we'll give you an update on that. And there was an article from Axios.com that deals with uh, leaders decry reported mistreatment of Africans fleeing Ukraine. Leaders decry uh, reported mistreatment of Africans leaving, uh, leaving Ukraine. We'll talk about this as well. Uh, there have been uh, about 660, uh, about 660,000 uh, people fleeing from Ukraine. And uh, over 50 percent of them are going to Poland. Over 50 percent of them are going to Poland. Uh, on yesterday's show, we talked about how uh, uh, President uh, Mohamedou uh, Bahari of uh, Nigeria was denouncing the mistreatment of Africans in uh, Ukraine, especially the approximately 4,000 Nigerians in Ukraine. And he was instructing them to uh, those that are leaving to go to Romania or Hungary, which also borders uh, Poland. So we'll talk about this uh, uh, as well. And then there was a uh, article, C- uh, CNN had a story about this as well about the uh foreign students fleeing ukraine say they face segregation racism at the border okay so cnn has a story on this so i know the past few days i've been talking about how a lot of mainstream media a lot of cable news has not been covering this story don lemon did talk about this uh on his show on cnn and CNN has an article uh, regarding this also. So we'll talk a little bit. Uh, we'll share a little information about that. And then uh, we'll talk some about uh, President Joe Biden's State of the Union address. He hit on a number of different topics uh, today. Washington Post has some really good analysis of it. Uh, so we'll talk about this some more on tomorrow's show as well. Washington Post, New York Times. I watched the entire speech, number one. Uh, number two, I always go through and look at analysis from different news sources. Washington Post, New York Times, um, NBC News, usually like thinkprogress.org, things like that. So I'll get a number of different sources. OK, so we'll talk about this on today's show and also tomorrow's show. All right, now on the African History Network show, we focus on educating, empowering, and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world, because right now it's correct your own behavior. What you do for yourself, what you do to yourself, 
And what you allow other people to do to you and get away with is based upon what you think about yourself. What you think about yourself is based upon what you have been taught about yourself. What you've been taught about yourself is based upon everything you've read, heard, and seen about yourself. So when you control the radius of a man or a woman's thoughts, you can control the circumference of his or her actions because the mind can't do or teach what it doesn't know. All right, now the calling number is 313-778-7600. 313-778-7600 is the call in number if you have a question or comment. Uh, we're going to jump into uh, this first story here dealing with the uh, Emmett Till uh, anti-lynching bill. So there was a there was a story that I saw from uh, New York Times has a, has a good story on this. Uh, House passes bill to make lynching a hate crime. And it was uh, Representative Bobby Rush of um, uh, Illinois who uh, is really behind this bill. Okay. And we're going to go, uh, when we come back from the break, Shakita, we're going to clip number one. Okay. From uh, ABC News Channel, uh, ABC Channel 7 in Chicago. Uh, we'll go to clip number one when we come back from the break. But very quickly here, if we look at this piece here from um, the New York Times. In the Hill, I posted an article from the Hill.com. Hill.com has an article on this from February 28th, February 28th. And then um, um, New York Times, Washington Post has stories on this also. I was looking at stories from different sources uh, on this bill. House passes bill to make lynching a hate crime. House passes bill to make lynching a hate crime. Lawmakers in both parties hailed the action as historic but a separate bill to outlaw discrimination based on a person's natural hair uh, failed amid Republican opposition. All right. Now you had three idiotic Republicans that need to be voted out of office who voted against the bill. Okay. Only three uh, in, in the house of representatives, representative, representative Andrew Clyde of Georgia, who, who now this is the dumbass who said, if uh, referring to the January 6th insurrection, if you didn't know better, it had just looked like it was a bunch of tourists uh, who were uh, going on a tour of, of the U.S. Capitol building. That's Andrew Clyde, who needs to be voted out of office. You had Thomas Massey, who posted a lovely uh, picture uh, for Christmas of uh, he and his family with assault rifles. OK, so you had that idiot. Uh, Representative Thomas Massey. And then you had this other dumbass named Representative uh, Chip Roy of Texas. He voted against the bill as well. Now, we're going to talk about Chip Roy because Chip Roy has some very interesting comments uh, of why. Now, these are all three white men, by the way. OK, this is not an attack on white men. I'm just stating facts. But Chip Roy had a very interesting take on lynchings. Now, he's from Texas. Texas had one of the highest numbers of lynchings in this country. OK. We'll deal with this on the other side of the break. Listen to the African History Network show. I'm Michael M. Hotel. We'll be back in a few minutes. Welcome back to the African History Network show right here on 9, 10 a.m. The Superstation of Future Radio. I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotel. It is Tuesday, March 1st, 2021. I mean, 2022. Tuesday, March 1st, 2022. And we are live. Okay, call in numbers 313-778-7600. 313-778-7600 is the call in number if you have a question or comment. Okay, I, I want to go uh, to this article here. This is from um, uh, New York Times. This deals with the House of Representatives on Monday, February 28th, 2022, uh, passing the Emmett Till anti-lynching bill. The bill passed 422 to 3 in the House. They got overwhelming uh, bipartisan support. There were three Republicans who voted against the bill. Only three Republicans voted against the bill. Uh, now, some people may uh, make mention and, and talk about a um, uh, Asian hate crime bill or Asian anti hate crime bill, things like this. I, first of all, the name of the bill ain't the Asian hate crime bill. It's the it's the COVID nineteen, it's the COVID nineteen uh, hate crimes act. Number one, go to uh, Congress.gov. Go to Congress.gov and actually like read the summary of the bill. Because the bill number one is not specific to race. 
Two, it only deals with COVID-19 related hate crimes. This is why it's important to read. It only deals with COVID-19 related hate crimes. And it, it applies to people regardless of race or ethnicity, which means it applies to African-Americans also. This is why it's important to read. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't read. That's one of the, that's one of the biggest problems. Um, so you had, uh, we'll, we'll, I'm going to come to uh, Representative Chip Roy here in just a second. There was a piece from blackamericaweb.com that talked about uh, Representative Chip Roy of Texas who voted against the bill. And uh, the name of this article, I guess rightfully so, from uh, Black America Web, is called Hang 'em High Republican Who Voted Against Emmett Till Bill Called Lynching a Metaphor for Justice. Now, see, this is an example of how elections have consequences and why a lot of these people need to be voted out of office who consistently vote against bills that we advocate for, okay? Or bills that are beneficial to us. Cause a lot of bills that are beneficial to us, we don't even know exist. A lot of people, cause I listen to what people say. A lot of these bit, like most people are not even talking about how HBCUs got $5.8 billion in the first year of the Biden Harris administration, which is a record number of funding for HBCUs. They've never gotten that type of money, but most people don't even mention that. Okay. We've talked about it here on this show. Hang 'em high Republican who voted against Emmett Till uh, bill called lynching, quote unquote, a metaphor for justice. OK, this is dumbass uh, Republican Chip Roy of Texas. He has framed lynchings in the context of law enforcement and even claimed they offer, quote unquote, protection to Americans. This is an example of how elections have consequences. This is why these people who consistently vote against uh, our own interests, we need to have enough sense to vote them out of office. Okay, we'll come back to that in just a minute. Good old chip, chip off the old block. Let's go back to this piece here from uh, the New York Times. We're going to clip one in just a second, Shakita. Okay, so... Uh, the House of Representatives on Monday overwhelmingly approved legislation that would make lynching a federal hate crime, uh, moving to formally outlaw a brutal act that has become a symbol of the failure by Congress and the country, become a symbol of the failure by Congress and the country to reckon with the history of racial violence in America. Passage of the anti-lynching bill named in honor of Emmett Till, 14-year-old African-American boy who was brutally murdered, J.W. Millam and Roy Bryant, August 28, 1955 in Money, Mississippi, came after more than a century of failed attempts, came after more than a century of failed attempts. OK, now somebody says not going to mean a thing if it doesn't pass the Senate. OK, well, the person that blocked it in the Senate helped write this bill and he supports it now. That's Senator Rand Paul of Kentucky. OK, so I talked about that in the beginning of the show. Now, lawmakers estimated they had tried more than 200 times to pass a measure to explicitly criminalize a type of attack that has long terrorized black Americans. Now, if you really want to do something, instead of complaining, saying it doesn't mean anything if the Senate don't pass it, when the person who blocked it in the Senate in June 2020 actually helped write this bill and says he now supports it, we're going to come to that. What you can do is call your two members of the U.S. Senate and ask them to pass this bill. Because, see, that's that's what a lot of people do. They call their senators. They call their members of the House of Representatives. They put pressure on them. They send emails. They call them. Now, the number to the congressional uh, to the uh, congressional switchboard, and I'm going to give you that number because I have it here on my phone because I've called before. Number to the congressional switchboard, we'll post it up here, is 202. Let me post the number up here. Congressional switchboard. Okay. Um, it's like when you download the document Indivisible, uh, which 
was used by a lot of people, especially white people across the country to uh, help save the Affordable Health Care Act and help put pressure on uh, on Republicans uh, during the Trump administration. The document Indivisible that we talked about here on the show before, it teaches you how to organize and put pressure on members of the House. Rep you're, you're a member of the House of Representatives and you're two members of the U.S. Senate. And they have form letters in there to teach you how to engage with your members of the House of Representatives. You're one because everybody has one member of the House of Representatives, the, the congressional district you live in. And uh, you have two U.S. senators. OK, uh, well, unless you live in Washington, D.C. Congressional switchboard. The number is 202-224-3121. So I have it stored on my phone. Congressional switchboard. 202-224-3121, okay? So we have to change the narrative. We, we can't sit back and talk about they don't do this, they don't do this, they need to do this, they need to do that. It don't mean a thing if it don't have that swing. Well, if they don't pass, damn all that, they stuff. We need to take control of our own destiny and put pressure on them and force our agenda. See, you got a lot of people talking about a black agenda. They don't know how to carry one out. A lot of them don't know how to write one because you have to understand history and law first to put together a black agenda. But how to execute one, how to carry one out, you force your agenda. You leverage your economics to enforce your, your political agenda. You, you leverage your economics to enforce and to force your politics. Call your member of the U.S. Senate, your two members of the U.S. Senate, and tell them to vote for the Emmett Till anti-lynching bill. 202-224-3121. Okay, we have to take more control of our destiny as opposed to leaving it up to other people. Oh, they uh, they they if they don't do this, it, they have to do this. Why aren't they doing damn all that stuff? No, we force our we we bring into existence the, the reality that we want. Okay, you, you can't talk about you can't spend seven days during Kwanzaa talking about Kuji Chagalia, Kuji Chagalia self-determination. And then the rest of the year, go back to being a Negro. And complaining about they don't do this, they don't do that. The hell with all that. Okay, so um, let's continue. Now, let's go back to this article here from uh, New York Times. So the bill was approved 422 to 3 and was expected to pass the Senate where it enjoys uh, broad support and was expected and, and it, it was expected to pass the Senate where it enjoys broad support because the person that blocked the bill helped write this one and he supports it. Now, Senator Paul of Kentucky, now he needs to be voted out of office. He's up for re-election in 2022. He needs to be voted out of office, but he did, he did a good thing here. Quote, the House today has sent a resounding message that our nation is finally reckoning with one of the darkest and most horrific periods of our history and that we are morally and legally committed to changing course, said Representative Bobby L. Rush, former member of the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense, Democrat of Illinois, who had vowed to see the legislation become law before retiring at the end of his term. He's retiring at the end of this term. He had vowed to see this legislation become law. In a statement, Representative Bobby Rush of Illinois, of Chicago, who was a civil rights leader and, and founded the Illinois chapter of the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense, recalled when he was an eight-year-old boy, he said he first saw a photograph of Emmett Till's battered body an image that he said shaped my consciousness as a black man in America. Shaped my, the, he said the image of Emmett Till's battered body, seeing Emmett Till there uh, laying in a coffin. Emmett Till's mother, Mamie, uh, Mamie Till, said she wanted to have an open casket funeral so the world can see what they did to her baby. He said that uh, seeing a photograph of Emmett Till's battered body shaped my consciousness as a black man in America changed the course of my life and changed our nation, end quote. We'll continue this on the other side of the break. Listen to the African History Network show on Michael M. Hotel. We'll be back in a few minutes.
The work that I do is larger than the fashion industry. It's larger than the art world. And I believe that I was born to bring newness into this world. I'm Kaima McIntyre. I'm 24 years old and I'm an artist. I create everything from paintings to jewelry design, metaphysical jewelry to be specific, and fashion design. The only reason why my prom dress went viral is because people needed it. Within a few days of going viral, Notori Naughton reached out to me and she's like, I saw your dress, can you make me a dress? I was equally as shocked to be asked by a celebrity to design their dress at the age of 17. That's just one person and the list just continues to go on to Janet Jackson, to Tyra Banks. It really hits home. That means that the discussion is happening on the grounds in real time. STEM Forward, helping our community find their place in the emerging fields of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Join us for our monthly live stream on our website, stemforwardedu.org. Watch, subscribe, share. Also join our mailing list to stay up to date with STEM resources and opportunities. STEM Forward, the future is now. Watch, subscribe, share. iRedify is a Black-owned digital platform that showcases Black and Brown cultures and people. The books on the platform are written by African-American authors, Afro-Caribbean authors, African authors, and so much more. Kids 14 and under can read eBooks, listen to audiobooks, and complete learning activities. Kids can even write in the books digitally Get unlimited access to everything on the platform for only $8.99 a month at iRedify.com. Sign up for your membership today. Only African American Talk Radio. Welcome back to the African History Network show right here on 9 10 a.m. the Superstation Future Radio. I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotel. It is Tuesday, March 1st. 2022 we have to get used to saying march and we are live calling numbers 313-778-7600 313-778-7600 is the call-in number if you have a question or comment okay so right before the break we were talking about uh the u.s house of representatives on uh monday february 28th last day of black history month uh passed by overwhelming bipartisan support the emmett till anti-lynching bill the emmett till anti-lynching bill okay uh new york times is a good article on this and they, they um there have been more than 200 attempts to pass a federal anti-lynching bill there have been more than 200 attempts to pass a federal anti-lynching bill. Uh, we can go back to 1917 and the uh, silent march of 1917, where you had uh, 10,000 African-Americans marching in uh, down Fifth Avenue in Manhattan. Okay, the silent march. And this was uh, demanding an anti-lynching bill, a federal anti-lynching bill. There's a piece from, there's one from AtlantaBlackStar.com on this. There's also one from um, a BlackPass.org. The march was organized by James Weldon Johnson who uh, wrote the uh, lyrics to Lift Every Voice and Sing in 1899, 1900, okay? And if we look here quickly here at this from uh, blackpass.org to, to connect the dots of this history. Now, this silent march, there was about 10,000 African-Americans marching down uh, Fifth Avenue in Manhattan. This took place after the East St. Louis race riot of 1979, East St. Louis, Illinois race riot of, um, of uh, 1917. 
okay? And the, uh, the NAACP helped organize this march. It was James Weldon Johnson. The silent protest parade, also known as the silent march, took place on Fifth Avenue uh, in New York City, Fifth Avenue in New York, Saturday, July 28, 1917. The protest was a response to violent uh, to violence against African Americans, including race riots, lynching, uh, and outrage and outrages in Texas, Tennessee, Illinois, and other states. One incident in particular, the East St. Louis race riot, uh, which we talked about here on this show before. I've done a presentation on this, also called the East St. Louis massacre, was a major catalyst of the uh, silent parade. This horrific event drove close to 6,000 blacks, 6,000 African-Americans from their own burning homes and left several hundred dead. OK, this was the, the East St. Louis, Illinois uh, race riot of 1917. And this preceded the uh, silent march of 1917, demanding a uh, federal anti-lynching bill, uh, a federal anti-lynching bill. Woodrow Wilson, white supremacist Woodrow Wilson was president at the time. This was two years after the movie, The Birth of a Nation uh, debuted February 8th, 1915, which showed, uh, which depicted the Ku Klux Klan as being the heroes, okay? To save America and to save white people. And that movie helped to rejuvenate the Ku Klux Klan. So we're going to see an increase in lynchings also after this movie. And this movie called this movie calls Race Rides in the Streets as well. OK, so uh, James Weldon Johnson, the second vice president of the NAACP, brought civil rights leaders together at uh, St. Philip's Church in New York to plan protest strategies. None of the group wanted a mass protest, yet all agreed that a silent protest through the streets of the city could spark racial reform and end and an end to violence. James Weldon Johnson remembered the idea of a silent protest from in the, uh, from uh, a NAACP conference in 1916 when Oswald Garrison uh, Villard suggested it. All the organizations agreed that this parade needed to be composed of the black citizens rather than a racially mixed gathering. Okay, all, all of the organizations agreed that this had to be all African-Americans protesting. They, they didn't want a racially mixed group protesting. They argue that as the principal victims of the violence, African-Americans had a special responsibility, had a special responsibility to participate in this, the first major public protest of racial violence in U.S. history. The parade went south down Fifth Avenue. It moved to 57th Street and then Madison Square. It brought out nearly 10,000 black women, men and children who all marched in silence. James Weldon Johnson urged that the only sound to be heard would be the sound of muffled drums. Children dressed in white led the protest and were followed by women. Also dressed in white, men brought up the rear dressed in dark suits. Um, they carried signs with them as well. Now, AtlantaBlackStar.com has a good article. Now, a lot of people found out about this silent march in 1970, in, in 2017, a lot of people found out about this uh, silent march in 2017. Uh, and that was, um, that was the 100th year anniversary, okay? And that was because, largely because of what Google did. Uh, Go uh, Ju July 28th, uh, Google marked the 100th anniversary with a, uh, icon on uh, the homepage of the Google search engine honoring the silent march. Okay. And this is how a lot of people found out about it because there were articles written about this. Friday, July 28th, 2017, March the, marked the 100th year anniversary of the silent parade, a demonstration of nearly 10,000 black Americans quietly parading down New York's Fifth Avenue to protest um, to, to protest uh, race-based violence and white supremacy. Okay, so they talk about the NAACP. They were holding signs 
uh, Time Magazine has an article on this. Dressed in white from head to toe, thousands of men, women, and children took to the streets, toting signs with slogans like, thou, sh thou shalt not kill and your hands are full of blood. Thou shalt not kill and your hands are full of blood. The goal, their goal was to get white supremacist President Woodrow Wilson to fulfill his promise of taking legislative action to protect the civil rights of, of African Americans, which he discussed during his presidential campaign. There was no singing, no chanting, just silence. No singing, no chanting, just silence. Tech giant Google said in a statement, quote, today's doodle, D-O-O-D-L-E, today's doodle commemorates the 100th anniversary of the silent march and honors those whose silence resonates a century later, okay? So it's been at least a hundred years that this is the actual doodle uh, doodle that uh, Google had on the homepage uh, at google.com, all right? So this is how a lot of people learned about this history that happened a hundred years previously. So the fight to get a federal anti-lynching bill is over a hundred years old. Okay, just so people understand this. Now, more than 200 times, the uh, lawmakers have tried more than 200 times to pass a measure to explicitly criminalize a type of attack that has long terrorized black Americans, that has explicitly, uh, explicitly criminalized a type of attack that has long terrorized black Americans. The bill was approved 42 to three, and was and 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 is expected to pass the Senate. Now, uh, let's go to this clip here from uh, ABC Channel Seven, uh, Shakita. Clip number one. Taking on the issue of making lynching a federal hate crime, the Emmett Till Anti-Lynching Act will receive a vote Monday evening on the House floor and is expected to pass. It was reintroduced by Congressman Bobby Rush. Hopefully people will think twice before they go out and commit a crime against a different person because of their race or gender or lifestyle. Ollie Gordon is Till's cousin. They lived in the same Woodlawn home until 1955 when Till was brutally tortured and killed while visiting relatives in Mississippi. His death at age 14 sparked the civil rights movement but repeated attempts over the years to make lynching a federal crime failed. I think we're moving in the right direction, despite how long it's taken. Perry Ermer is the president and CEO of the DuSable Museum, which currently has an installation called Unresolved. It highlights the cases of more than 150 people who were killed during the civil rights movement. Ermer says this latest step toward making lynching a federal hate crime is long overdue. It's Congress so is once again taking on the issue of younger generations not repeat the mistakes of the past, not repeat the criminal acts of the past. The Anti-Lynching Act came close to becoming law two years ago. It passed the House but was blocked in the Senate. This time, legislation applies to a wider range of circumstances, and Gordon says she's cautiously optimistic. I'm hopeful and I'm praying that it will pass in the Senate. Once the bill passes the House, it's expected to receive a unified show of support from senators, including Rand Paul from Kentucky, who opposed the original measure two years ago for being too broad. Karen Jordan, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Okay. Congress is one. Pause right there, Shakita. Okay, we're coming up on the break. We'll continue this on the other side of the break. We'll give an update on what's going on um, in Ukraine, and we'll try to squeeze and talk a little bit about uh, Joe Biden's uh, State of the Union address as well. We're going to talk about that more on uh, tomorrow's show. Listen to the African History Network show. I'm Michael M. Hotel. We'll be back in a few minutes. The Business Scaling Challenge is a seven-day online event that is taking place the week of March 13th through March 19th, 2022. This challenge will guide a group of business owners through scaling their businesses. Business owner Ronnie Sumler is hosting the Business Scaling Challenge in remembrance and honor of her father, the late civil rights activist Rodney Sumler. 
He helped a lot of African-American-owned businesses and local community leaders participate in politics. However, when he passed away, all of his ventures died with him. This inspired his daughter, Ronnie Sumler, to help community business owners preserve their businesses. Her business, Digital Dandelions, offers business Bibles to record business processes and procedures. Their business Bibles are their branded run of show business manuals that have everything you need to run your business in one place. Their business scaling kit is the first step in creating a business Bible. It includes everything needed to grow your business in one place. Join the Business Scaling Challenge Facebook group for more information and good luck in scaling your business. Mental health and well-being have long been a taboo subject in the so-called African-American community. So I enlisted the help of mental health experts, thought leaders, and activists to help kill the ghost of Willie Lynch and heal from post-traumatic slave syndrome. We experience trauma a lot of times um, on a subconscious level. So sometimes something happens to us and we know that it's traumatizing, but we don't really recognize the extent of the trauma. Welcome back to the African History Network show right here on 9, 10 a.m. The Superstation of Future Radio. I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotel. All right, you can still register for the uh, online classes I teach on Saturdays and Sundays. Um, on Saturday, it is uh, Ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa, understanding the transatlantic slave trade where they didn't teach them in school. We deal with thousands of years of history and what leads up to the transatlantic slave trade taking place. We go through history chronologically. We also deal with the 800-year occupation, occupation of Europe by the Africans known as the Moors. Okay, next class is Saturday, uh, March 5th, 2022. This is a 10 week online course that I teach. We do it um, Saturdays, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The class is regularly $130 on sale, $80. And as soon as you register, you can watch last week's classes, bonus content also. Um, on Sundays, I teach uh, from the Civil War to the Civil Rights Movement and Black Power, 1865 to 1968. Okay, we have a bundle pack. You can register for both classes. Uh, for um, you can register for both classes for only one hundred twenty dollars. That's a two hundred sixty dollar value. And if you've taken any of my online classes with me before, uh, email me at ahn show at africanhistorynetwork dot com, and you'll get uh, fifty percent off uh, the classes. All right, let's continue here. So we're going to uh, we're going to clip two uh, in just a second, Shakita. Uh, dealing with Ukraine. All right, now, if we go back to, okay, so first of all, check out the article from ABC Channel 7 in Chicago. Um, this was Emmett Till anti-lynching bill, uh, Emmett Till anti-lynching act, House passes bill to make lynching a federal hate crime. This is from Monday, February 28th, 2022, ABC Channel 7 Chicago. Okay, so check out that article. Now, uh, if we go back to the piece from the New York Times, uh, House passes bill to make lynching a hate crime. House passes bill to make lynching a hate crime. Uh, in the article, it goes on to say, let's see, page two. It talks about the uh, the two idi the three idiots that voted against the bill. Three uh, Republicans, Representatives Andrew Clyde of Georgia. All three of these guys are Trump supporters, by the way. Surprise, surprise, surprise. Thomas Massey of Kentucky and Chip Roy of Texas opposed the anti-lynching bill. The legislation now heads to the Senate, where the chamber formally apologized in 2005 for its failure to act on the issue, including during the Jim Crow era when Southern senators successfully blocked efforts to take it up. Now, in 2018, three uh, black senators, Cory Booker, a uh, Democrat of New Jersey, uh, Senator Tim Scott, Republican of South Carolina, and Senator then Senator Kamala Harris of California attempted to resurrect the be it to make lynching a federal hate crime. The legislation passed the Senate in December 2018, just weeks before Congress adjourned. It surfaced again in the summer of 2020 amid a wave of uh, uh, racial justice protests following the killings 
of African-American men, women, men and women by white people. It ignited a fight on the Senate floor after Senator Rand Paul, Republican of Kentucky, objected to its quick passage, calling it overly broad, calling it overly broad. On Monday, Senator Rand Paul said in a statement he would support the measure. OK, he would support the measure which Senator Cory Booker and Senator Tim Scott reintroduced on Monday evening. He said, quote, I'm pleased to have worked with Senators Booker and Scott to strengthen the final product and ensure the language of this bill defines lynching as the absolutely heinous crime that it is. Uh, Senator Rand Paul said now the House vote came on the final day of Black History Month when House leaders also tried and failed to pass another bill that would bar racial discrimination, that will bar racial discrimination based on natural hairstyle, natural hair and hairstyles, including cornrows, twists, and braids. The measure drew bipartisan support, but fell short of the two thirds that would have been needed to push it through under a special process reserved for consensus bills. Okay, so try, try again, try to get that passed again. The measure which passed by voice vote in 2020 would assert that racial and national origin discrimination can, can and do occur because of longstanding racial and national origin biases and stereotypes associated with hair texture and style. Representative Bonnie Watson Coleman, Democrat from New Jersey, member of the Congressional Black Caucus, and the champion of the legislation urged her colleagues to support it, declaring that, quote, our natural hair is an innate, is an innate, is as innate a quality of black people as the presence of melanin in our skin. Quote, nobody should have to sacrifice their time, their money, and the health of their hair for the sake of complying with racist standards of professionalism. Okay. This, this is uh, Representative Bonnie Watson Coleman. She said, quote, nobody should have to sacrifice their time, their money, and their health of their hair for the sake of complying with racist standards of professionalism. But a majority of Republicans oppose the measure. Um, elections have consequences. A majority of Republicans oppose the measure, which is why we need to vote a lot of these people out of office. Representative dumbass Jim Jordan of, of Ohio, big Trump supporter, big conspiracy theorist, the top Republican on the House Judiciary Committee. If, if, if Republicans take back control of the House of Representatives, dumbass Jim Jordan out of Ohio who looks like he shops at the boys section of Kmart because he doesn't wear a suit coat, he'll be chair of the House Judiciary Committee. He called it, quote, unnecessary and duplicative, unnecessary and duplicative, given, given existing laws against discrimination. Representative Lauren Bobart, conspiracy theorist, a uh, big Trump supporter, Representative Lauren Bobart of Colorado, reading aloud a proxy vote derisively referred to the legislation as the bad hair bill, the bad hair bill. House Democrats vowed to bring up the legislation again through the regular process, which would allow it to pass with a simple majority. It would face a far tougher path in the Senate where it has no Republican sponsors and where 60 votes are needed to pass to, uh, to pass most legislation, which is why more of these Republicans need to be voted out of office because they keep voting against our own interests. Ste several states have passed similar bills, including the New Jer including in New Jersey, in New Jersey, after a black high school wrestler was forced to cut his dreadlocks to compete. That's, that story went national. We talked about it here on this show. On Monday, the Minnesota House uh, of Representatives passed its own version with a bipartisan vote. Okay, those watching, uh, this is uh, Bonnie Watson Coleman right here, Representative Bonnie Watson Coleman. Um, those watching on Facebook and YouTube, keep watching. We're going to keep going for a few more minutes. We're going to talk about this idiot right here, Chuck Roy, who uh, out of Texas, who voted against the bill. And he said, he, vote, he voted against the Emmett Till anti-lynching bill. He's, he called lynching a metaphor for justice. I wonder, I wonder what he's talking about out of Texas. 
He called lynching a metaphor for justice. Okay, thanks for listening to the African History Network show. Remember, right now, let's correct wrong behavior. It's not over till we win. We'll kind of forever. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Peace. All right, stand by. Okay, let's continue here. How's everybody doing? If you like this type of information, you can support the African History Network, dollar sign, the AHN show through Cash App, dollar sign, the AHN show through Cash App, also through PayPal, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show, and uh, also at our website, africanhistorynetwork.com. We have the uh, information there. The helps us keep doing the research, stay on the air, keep broadcasting. This is our official Cash App account, dollar sign, the AHN show, S-H-O-W. When you go to it, it says Michael and shows my picture there. These um, these other ones here are fake African History Network Cash App accounts. And uh, we have the link here. Um, and then uh, also we have the um, uh, PayPal button there as well. All right. And then uh, we have the information on our website also to register for the online classes, uh, online history classes. I teach on the uh, on the weekends also. Okay, let's continue here. Let's go back to this. So, check out that piece from uh, New York Times, the New York Times. House passes bill making. Uh, House passes bill to make lynching a hate crime. This is the Emmett Till um, Anti uh, Lynching Hate Crime Act. Now, uh, BlackAmericaWeb.com has this uh, piece on the same on the same topic. Hang 'em high, Republican. Who vowed, who voted against Emmett Till bill called lynching a metaphor for justice. Hang 'em high Republican who voted against Emmett Till bill called lynching a metaphor for justice. Texas Representative Chip Roy has framed lynchings in the context of law enforcement and even claimed they offered protection to Americans. This is a picture of a uh, chip off the old block, good old chip. Hold on, what the hell is this? Come on. Yeah, too many pop-ups from Black America Web. This is this is good old chip. Good uh, upstanding citizen. Now, the historic passage of the anti-lynching bill in the House of Representatives on Monday wasn't even close with the vote of 422 to three, but the lopsided vote also brought attention to three Republicans, three Republican congressmen who opposed the bill named for Emmett Till that would make lynching a federal hate crime. One of them, Texas Representative of Chip Roy has made no secret about his feelings toward lynching, which is an infamous terroristic vigilante tactic employed against African Americans by racist whites in the 19th and 20th century, 20th centuries, that often ended in public executions by way of hangings. Now, tech, uh, Representative Chip Roy of Texas, Republican, has framed the topic of lynchings in the context of law enforcement, framed the topic of lynchings in the, in the, in the uh, context of law enforcement, and even claimed that it offered protection to Americans, which is tantamount to racist dog whistling. Now, in case you haven't figured it out, he voted against the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. In case you're trying to, in case you're sitting there trying to figure out, did he, did he vote for the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act? No Republicans in the House of Representatives voted for the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. 
That bill passed the House of Representatives March 3rd, 2021 by a vote of 220 to 212. All the Republicans voted against the bill. The only people that voted for the bill were Democrats. Just about a year ago, Representative Chip Roy expressed a similar sentiment during a congressional hearing about anti uh, about Asian Americans and hate crimes. Representative Chip Roy, Republican from Texas, said we believe in justice. He said in reference to people from Texas, he went on to glorify lynching imagery. He went on to glorify lynching imagery. He said, quote, there there's old sayings in Texas about find all the rope in Texas and get a tall oak tree. Representative Chip, Chip Roy, Republican from Texas, said good upstanding citizen. There's old sayings in Texas. Find all the rope in Texas and get a tall oak tree. He said, you know, we take justice very seriously and we ought to do that round up the bad guys that's what we believe hmm very interesting later representative chip roy doubled down on that hatefully violent rhetoric a brief interview with the austin american statesman in 2021 at the time, he said he views lynching through the lens of policing. At the time, he said he views lynching through the lens of policing. That's very interesting. He said, quote, I'm pro law enforcement. I'm pro taking out the bad guys, hang them high. He said about lynching. So. What should happen to the domestic terrorists that stormed the U.S. Capitol building January 6th, Representative Chip Roy? I'm just curious. They, they assaulted police officers. Some police, uh, a handful of police officers ended up dying. There's 140 police officers that were injured by domestic terrorists. They were threatening, some of them threatening to hang Mike Pence. Somebody built a gallow outside, had a hangman's noose. So I'm just curious. I'm pro law enforcement. When? I'm pro taking out the bad guys, hang them high. He all but shrugged when asked about America's history of lynching black people. Representative Chip Roy of Texas asked, yeah, so. He said it was a metaphor for justice. Now, clearly, he viewed his uh, clearly Roy's views about lynchings, for which his state was responsible for hundreds of instances, has not evolved. Now, Democrats demand he resigns. He, he's not going to resign. He needs to be voted out of office. According to the Lynching in Texas website, there were more than 600 lynchings in the Lone Star State between 1882 and 1945. The NAACP put lynchings in their proper historical perspective. A typical lynching involved a criminal accusation, an arrest, and the assembly of a mob followed by seizure, physical torment, and murder of the victim, followed by seizure followed by seizure, physical torment, and murder of the victim, oftentimes mutilation, castration, things like this. Lynchings were often public spectacles attended by the white community in celebration of white supremacy. Photos of lynchings were often sold as souvenir cards. This is why a lot of these dumbasses have to be voted out of office. I'm telling you. You, you, you can't let people stay in office who keep voting against your own interests. Elections have consequences. Illinois Representative Bobby Rush, a Democrat and, and former member of the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense, who introduced the Emmett Till Anti-Lynching Act, took to Twitter to say that he was not surprised that Representative Chip Roy was among the three Republicans who voted against the bill. 
Representative Bobby Rush also called out the other two uh, Republicans who voted against the bill, including Georgia Representative Andrew Clyde, who called the January 6th insurrection a normal tourist visit, a normal tourist visit of domestic terrorists. And Kentucky Representative Thomas Massey, who wrote a bill to uh, uh, allow guns in school zones. That's Representative Thomas Massey out of Kentucky. Here's a tweet from Representative Bobby Rush. He said, who were the three votes against the anti-lynching act tonight? And he, he calls them out. He says, all Republicans surprised. Now, the bill will ensure that the full force of the federal government is always brought to bear on individuals who commit the monstrous act of lynching, Representative Bobby Rush said in a separate tweet. OK, the bill now advances to the Senate. OK, read the rest of this article here from BlackAmericaWeb.com. Hang them high. Hang them high, Republican who voted against Emmett Till bill called lynching a metaphor for justice. Uh-huh. Okay. Now, at NAACP.org also, their, their national website, they have um, information there on lynchings and the history of lynchings. So you can check that out. History of lynchings, NAACP.org. And if you just Google lynchings in NAACP, it'll come up. History of lynching in America. Um, we know there were 4,743 lynchings from 1882 to about 1968. Uh, Mississippi had the most number of lynchings. Mississippi had 581 lynchings. Okay, Texas was third. So the highest number of lynchings uh, okay, so 18, 1882 to 1968, there were 4,743 lynchings that were recorded in the U.S., 4,743 lynchings, all right? Now, um, other accounts, including the Equal Justice Initiative's extensive report on lynching, count slightly different numbers, but it's impossible to know for certain how many lynchings occurred because there was no formal tracking. Many historians believe the true number is underreported. The highest number of lynchings during that time period, 1882 to 1968, occurred in Mississippi where Emmett Till was lynched, okay? And then also was in Mississippi where uh, Megra Evers was killed as well, 1963 by Byron, Byron Della Beckwith. Mississippi had 581 recorded lynchings. Georgia had the second highest number of lynchings where uh, Ahmaud Arbery was lynched February 30, uh, February 23rd, 2020. Okay, luckily those three uh, white men and lynched him are in prison. Georgia had the second number of lynchings, 531. And Texas had the third number, third highest number of lynchings, 493. Lynchings did not occur in every state. Uh, there are no recorded lynchings in Arizona, Idaho, Maine, Nevada, South Dakota, Vermont, and Wisconsin. African Americans were the primary victims of lynchings. There were 3,446, three, uh, 3, or about 72% of the people lynched during that period of time, 1882 to 1968, were African American. But they were not the only victims, okay? There were there, there were one thousand two hundred. They don't have the number here, but I, I've seen it before. There were one thousand two hundred and ninety seven white people who were lynched during that same period of time. Also, 1882 to 1968, because the Ku Klux Klan and other white domestic terrorist organizations were not just targeting. Um, were not just targeting. Um, African-Americans, they were also targeting white Republicans. OK. And they were targeting Jews. They were they were targeting Chinese and, and different ethnic groups. African Americans got the brunt of it, but they were not the only ones being lynched. Okay, so check this out here. 
Immigrant immigrants from Mexico, China, Australia, and other countries were also lynched. All right, uh, so read the rest of this piece here. History of lynching in America. Okay, now I want to go to um, I want to give a, a quick update on Ukraine because we're way over time. We're gonna run out of time here. Okay. What has the NAACP done about lynching? Did you not? I guess you came in late. We dealt with some of the history of the NAACP 100 years ago fighting against lynchings. Uh, read this. How the NAACP fought lynching with pictures of a man being lynched. This is one article. We, uh, we talked about the silent march in 1917 organized by James Weldon Johnson of the NAACP. In the NAACP, 10,000 African-Americans marching down Fifth Avenue in New York City, demanding federal anti-lynching laws. I guess I guess I guess this person came in late. All right, let's continue. For those for those that came in late, we talked about this in the beginning. This is just one example. Many learn a silent parade for first time after Google honors iconic civil rights march, which is organized by James Weldon Johnson and the NAACP. They've been fighting uh, for federal anti-lynching laws for over 100 years. All right, and this is NAACP's official website. You can Google it also. I just, okay, no, 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 I'm not going to say that, but anyway. Uh, NAACP.org. I'm going to be nice. <laughs> NAACP.org. Now, some of the horrific images I'm not going to show, okay? I'm not going to show some of the horrific images. They have some here. This is the NAACP's official website. What we witnessed with George Floyd was the same public spectacle, someone in broad daylight with onlookers being killed at the hands of a law enforcement officer who has just uh, who has just complete disregard for human life and felt he was above the law. Is Derek Johnson, president and CEO of the NAACP. So they, they have a history of the NAACP's involvement fighting against lynchings. All this here is at, at their website. Okay. All right. Let me post this link here. Share this with your friends that ask these questions. I just find it, I just really find it interesting when people ask questions like that, but okay. All right. So. <laughs> I mean, I just, I just find it interesting. I guess Google don't work on their phone. No, I, so okay. But anyway, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna be nice. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just asking. I, you know, I just, I just find it interesting. But this is information on lynchings and the history of lynchings and the NAACP fighting against lynchings at their website naacp.org so i just you know <laughs> i just find it interesting people ask questions like that. you know i i know i understand people don't know but it's like okay uh there's something called google <laughs> you know <laughs> right ida b wells <laughs> ida b wells 1892 memphis tennessee <laughs> Ida B. Wells was founded in NAACP. The reason why the NAACP was founded was one of the main reasons was the fight against the lynchings that were taking place in 1909. All right, but anyway, I don't want to be here all night, all day. 
Uh, okay, let's go to uh, Ukraine. Okay, so if we look here at, uh, let me see, we've got the update from Ukraine. So this is day six of the attack. And if we look at these updates here from the Washington Post, and we're going to go to this clip here from NBC News, rest of the stuff uh, we'll have to get to tomorrow. Uh, Biden State and Union address. He had, he had a really good speech. He hit on a number of different topics. He talked about uh, many of the accomplishments and talked about the American Rescue Plan, one point trillion dollar um, infrastructure bill, a lot of things. You, get, you had these two idiots up here. Uh, a handful of GOP lawmakers kept up something of a running commentary through the speech at the at, at times uh, were audible. Uh, Representatives Lauren Boebert and Marjorie Taylor Greene were the loudest. Uh, Boebert shouted, that's right, when Biden spoke of funding the police. Uh, Greene, who has racked up more than $88,000 in mask-related fines, in the house grumbled through the entire section on COVID-19 and yelled something about women's sports during the mention of transgender youth. When Biden mentioned, when Biden mentioned immigration, both Congresswomen tried to start a build the wall chant. Uh, yeah, but yo, you know, I find it interesting when people are anti-immigrant and it's like, your ancestors were immigrants. Don't get it twisted now. Some of some of your ancestors, some of these people's ancestors came here illegally. Don't get it twisted. Some of these people's ancestors were criminals when they came here. So this is I'm on NBC News. Uh, I'm on their uh, Instagram page, and they show these two idiots, uh, Lauren Boebert, uh, the one the, the brunette, and then uh, uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, the blonde. She gives dumb blondes a bad name. Marjorie Taylor Greene spoke at a um uh white supremacist um marjorie taylor green spoke at a white supremacist um rally just a couple of days ago and then she had to backtrack from it and say she really didn't know the uh <laughs> she really didn't know the views of other people there things like this it, you really sounded like you were really at home i saw some of she looked like she was at home she looked like those were her type of people Marjorie Taylor Greene of the, of the good old state of Georgia that has the largest Confederate monument of anywhere in the country. It's called Stone Mountain. Uh, let me see something here. Oh, this is a good one right here. So... <laughs> Um, the, the okay, the independent has a story picked up by Yahoo News. So, Marjorie Taylor Greene, uh, the QAnon crazy lady, crazy QAnon conspiracy theorist lady, she defends speaking at white supremacist events, saying she didn't know what it was. She didn't know, so you just go speak at events and you don't know what it was, you don't do any research, anything like this. Okay, this is from uh, February 26, 2022. This is here, she is good upstanding citizen lover of guns marjorie taylor green yeah make make it yeah this make america great again yeah representative marjorie taylor green waded into newfound controversy on friday when she attended when she attended a white nationalist convention in florida and tried to claim afterwards that she didn't know what she was doing now look, okay let's just stop for a minute right when a organization asks you to speak for them, usually it's because they like what you have to say and they think that your ideology, your what you advocate for, your pol policies fall in line with their ideology and what they advocate for, okay? So say hypothetically she ain't no what the group was about, things like this. 
Well, they knew what you were about. That's why they asked you to speak. Okay, I've spoken all across the country for different groups all across the country. When a, a, a group asks you to speak, is because they like what you have to say and they think that your ideology, what you advocate for, what you say, your policies that you support, fall in line with their agenda and their ideology and, their, and the policies they support, what they advocate for. So she said, she said when she attended a white nationalist convention in Florida and, and she tried to claim afterwards that she didn't know what she was doing. Okay. Now the Georgia Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene attended an event hosted by Nick Fuentes, one of the, one of the United States most, let me scroll over here. Let's get this here. Nick Fuentes, one of the United States most well-known white nationalists and far right figures. He knows who you are, but you're clueless. You make dumb blondes look bad, Marjorie Taylor Greene. Nick Fuentes is one of the United States most well-known white nationalists and far-right figures. Okay? He also cheered Russia and Putin uh, at, the, at, at the little white nationalist convention also. Mr. Fuentes attended the 2017 Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville, Virginia during which neo-Nazis and far-right activists clashed with counter-protesters. Now, if you if you Google this, and they may have the video in here, you watch Marjorie Taylor Greene, she just acts like she's at home, just like, just, just home with good old down-home folk, you know, just good old, you know, like she was with, not saying born Luke Duke or white supremacist, but, you know, if you were like, just like with the Waltons, or you like with, you know, the, if you were like with Bo and Luke Duke and, and Uncle Jesse and, and Daisy, just good old, good down home folk. She felt right at home with these people. On Saturday, Marjorie Taylor Greene initially attempted to dodge questions about the event. Well, wait a second. If you ain't know what it was, why don't you just say, okay, well, I didn't know what it was, what have you. But she, she attempted to dodge questions about the event. OK, but address reporters after it became clear that her attendance at the event was not a guarded secret. During her brief remarks, she claimed to have never heard of Nick Fuentes or his beliefs, even though he's one of the most well-known white supremacists in, in, in the uh, let's back up. He's one of he's one of the U.S. most well-known white nationalists and far right figures. Okay, so Marjorie Taylor Greene, let me ask you a question. You don't have a staff? All Congress people have a congressional staff. They have your schedule. They know what they know ahead of time where you're going to uh speak at. Nobody on your staff said, uh look here. Uh this is one of like the most well-known white nationalists and far right figures. Uh I don't think you want to go to this. Nobody Nobody, you know, looked out for a sister. I mean, nobody said, wait a second, I don't think you want to go here because your views don't line up with these people's views. You don't want to go to that. But maybe if your views do line up with those people's views, then it's OK. On Saturday, she initially attempted to dodge questions about the event, but address reporters after it became clear that her attendance at the event was not a guarded secret. During her brief remarks, she claimed to have never heard of Nick Fuentes or his beliefs. Her remarks came hours after she uh, shared a stage with him and even went on Twitter. She even went on Twitter to defend her efforts as aimed at reaching young conservatives. OK, so you go to a white nationalist organization, you go to a white nationalist event to reach young conservatives. Oh, wow. <laughs> OK. That says a whole lot about young conservatives. We're going to go to a white nationalist convention. Next week, we're going to go to a KKK rally. Okay. Okay. Then ne ne the week after that, we're going to go to a neo-Nazi rally. Okay. So <laughs> sometimes, see, now you expect me to believe nobody on your staff knew any better. 
Her remarks came hours after she shared the stage with Nick Fuentes, and then even and then she went on Twitter to defend her efforts as aimed at reaching young conservatives. We have a young conservative outreach group where we go to white nationalist organizations and their events to reach young conservatives because that's where young conservatives are. She should have said young white conservatives because that's who she's talking about. She said, I don't know Nick Fuentes. I never heard, I never heard him speak. I've never seen a video. I don't know what his views are. So I'm not aligned with anything that may be controversial, she said. She said, so I'm not aligned with anything. Okay, who asked you to speak at that conference? You don't have a staff that like researches the organizations that ask you to speak. That's what most people do. Most congressional staffers, they don't just, they want to know who, who they're speaking for. Robert Costa posted this from CB, uh, CBS News. Uh, Robert Costa for NBC posted this. Um, he said, at CBS News Press, Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene on her appearance last night at a white NASA's conference. Here's a full video. Let's watch this. this <laughs> is it? <laughs> Let's watch this. this Stuff I have got to get to the airport. Let's, 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 see what, let's see what MGT had to say. M, uh, uh, MTG. Uh, let's see what she had to say. Hold on. Let's see. This should, this should be this would be good. Stuff I have got to get to the airport. I'm glad to talk to you about this. I do not know Nick Fuentes. I've never heard him speak. I've never seen a video. I don't know what his views are, so I'm not lined with anything that may be controversial. What I can tell you is I went to his event last night to address his very large following because that is a young, it's a very young following and it's a generation I'm extremely concerned about. It's a white nationalist excuse me, group. Excuse me a minute. I'll tell you exactly why I went. I went to talk to them about American First policies and I talked to them about what's important for our country going forward. Now, in regards to Russia, Putin is a murderer and he should have never invaded Ukraine. What he is doing is completely wrong. I stand with our NATO member allies and I'm completely against this war. It's a and, white excuse nationalist me, I'm going to finish. Everything that he's doing is wrong. He's killing people over and over. So I'm staunchly against it and I'm staunchly against Vladimir Putin and his, his invasion of Ukraine. Another thing that's extremely important for me to say is the whole reason this is happening is because Joe Biden is a weak president. Now America is a weak country and our entire world is falling apart and we're seeing war erupt, which did not happen under President Trump because we had peace through strength. So this is something that we've got to really focus on and I'm appalled at, at our country for putting America last this way, making us depend on China. Russia and foreign countries for our critical supplies and our energy. Do you endorse excuse, Nick Fuentes' views? Excuse me. I, I don't know what his views are. I've never. He's a white nationalist. I, I do not endorse those views. The reason why I went was to talk to the audience, just like I've talked to many different audiences. I've talked to Democrat union workers earlier this week. I've talked here at CPAC. I talked to his people who were there. It wasn't an alignment. It was to talk about getting everyone together to save our country. And I think- But if I ask, why did you take the stage though? And appearance is an endorsement. The young white men with the secret sauce. <laughs> okay, so let me go back to my original question. Who invited you to speak? Who invited, because if, if, if your views didn't line up with this white nationalist organization, they wouldn't ask you to speak. They wouldn't ask me to speak. So who who asked you to speak? <laughs> See, notice notice she didn't talk about that at all. <laughs> all right. Um, let's see here. So watch this. So you can watch the rest of that. Watch that again. Um, okay, so she spoke to reporters. And uh, he has made numerous, okay. But Miss Cheney wasn't buying it as reporters who questioned Marjorie Taylor Greene also refused to do. Uh, Mr. Fuentes is one of the most prominent white nationalists in America and has a well-documented history of making deeply offensive remarks. He has made numerous anti-Semitic comments over the years and is a prominent gusher, a prominent pusher of the white genocide conspiracy theories. 
uh, which posit that liberals are trying to forcibly destroy white people as a race. Now, this is Representative Liz Cheney blasting her, Representative Liz Cheney, Republican of Oklahoma, who is ostracized by a lot of these Trump-loving Republicans. As Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene and Representative Paul, Go Paul Gosar was there also, another white supremacist. Paul, Representative Paul Gosar, he attended, he attended that, meet, uh, that conference as well. As Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene and Representative Paul Gosar speak at this white supremacist, anti-Semitic, pro-Putin event, uh, silenced by Republican Party leaders is deafening and enabling. All Americans should renounce this garbage and reject the Putin wing of the GOP now. <laughs> That's little Nikki right there, little Nikki, little darling Nikki. That's him right there. Okay, I'm not even gonna play what he said. You can you can watch it. You can watch it. Uh, okay, so go uh, watch the rest of this. So <laughs> now she's trying to backtrack and say I don't know who he is. All this stuff, you know, I never heard him before. I don't I don't know what he stands for. Who invited you to speak? Why they invite you to speak? That's what I want to know because your views line up with what they what they say. But but when she said she said she went to go speak to young conservatives because that group attracts a lot of young conservatives. Okay, yeah, yeah. This see this is this, that's the white nationalist party, the GOP. <laughs> They're the white nationalist party. She knew why she was there. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Uh, okay, I posted the link there. That's from Yahoo News, picked up by uh, from. Um, that's from um, the Independent, picked up by Yahoo News, and um, Representative uh, Kevin McCarthy, little spineless Kevin McCarthy, he came out. And he had, he had to finally condemn uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene as well. Kevin McCarthy of of California, who needs to be voted out of office as well. Kevin McCarthy condemns Marjorie Taylor Greene and Paul Gosar for attending appalling and wrong white nationalist event. This is unacceptable, but you support a white nationalist named Donald Trump, Kevin McCarthy. I said, come on. All right. Now let's go to this quickly here. Uh, update on, it was Bobby Rush. Somebody asked who sponsored the bill, the, uh, Emmett Till anti-lynching bill, Bobby Rush of Illinois. Uh, read this article here from New York Times. House passes bill to make lynching a hate crime. He vowed to see the legislation become law before retiring at the end of his term. All right, now, a uh, quick update here on what's going on in uh, Ukraine. This is day six of the invasion. Biden says Putin is isolated, issues plea for his domestic agenda. In his first State of the Union address, um, Biden says we will save democracy. He says uh, he says as he concludes his remarks, Biden vows to fund the police. Receives bipartisan applause. Biden urges Americans to stop looking at COVID as a pattern, as a partisan dividing line. Okay, these are not the updates I want from. Uh, oh, here's the updates I want dealing with Russia. He talked about Ukraine in his uh, uh, State of the Union address. We'll talk about that more on tomorrow's show. Moscow steps up assault on residential areas. Biden closes U.S. airspace to Russian planes. Footage shows aftermath of missile strike targeting Kiev's uh, uh, TV tower and Holocaust Memorial killing five. Uh, Biden, uh, uh, Biden says Putin was wrong. Uh, we were ready at his uh, State of the Union address. Nearly 680,000 Ukrainians have fled in what might be Europe's largest uh, refugee crisis this century. The U United Nations says uh, nearly 680,000 um, 
Ukrainians have fled. Okay, so these are updates from uh, Tuesday, March 1st. With a massive convoy of Russian troops idling just 20 miles north of central Kiev, the uh, capital of uh, Ukraine, and shelling intensifying from the capital to cities across Ukraine, Moscow appeared to escalate its attacks on residential areas Tuesday with videos and social media posts documenting the devastation and fierce fighting, documenting the devastation and fierce fighting. Now, The most visible assault came when a missile strike hit Kiev's main tower, TV tower, in a nearby Holocaust memorial, killing at least five people, officials said. Footage of the aftermath obtained uh, by the Washington Post showed a gruesome scene of blown out cars and buildings and several bodies on fire. Kiev was uh, bracing for an all-out assault amid, amid fears that Russian troops would encircle the capital as they've apparently done in the country's second largest city, Kharkiv, uh, its mayor told the Washington Post. In his State of the Union address, President Joe Biden applauded the bravery of Ukrainians uh, uh, fighting the invasion and called the United St and called for the United States and its allies to continue to support the resistance to Russian forces. Now the U S is not so, so some people, it's, the U S is not going to like actively get involved and actually start shooting at Russians and things like this, because that can trigger world war three. They're there to support Ukraine, which is a sovereign country and has its own army. And they're there to support other NATO nations. Okay. But if, uh, like some people said, oh, they should, uh, uh, the U.S. should uh, uh, cut off the airspace or something, or something like that, right? If the U.S. shoots down a Russian plane, that could drastically escalate things and that could, you could, launch world war three because when you when you go study world war one the u.s wasn't involved in world war one in the beginning world war one started in 1914 u.s didn't get involved in 1917 world war two starts about 1939 u.s doesn't get involved in 19 until 1941 with pearl harbor's bomb so the u.s they have troops there to assist the ukrainians but the ukrainians have an army But Biden acknowledged the next few days, weeks and months will be hard for Ukraine with Russian President Vladimir Putin expected to continue escalating his offensive. Biden also announced that the United States would close its airspace to um, uh, Russian airlines, further isolating Russia and adding additional squeeze on their economy. So their economy's in shambles now. Now you have nearly 680,000 Ukrainians have left the country since the start of the invasion in the United Nations, uh, since the start of the invasion, uh, which started um, on uh, the 24th, Thursday, February 24th. Okay. And let me increase the size of this here. Nearly 680,000 Ukrainians have left the country since the start of the invasion. The United Nations reported marking the largest exodus in Europe since the Balkan Wars of 1900s. Congressional Democrats and Republicans are rallying around a new push to provide billions of dollars in aid uh, to Ukraine. Um, the U.S. is also, so you have different European nations like Germany, providing military weapons 
for Ukraine, to the Ukrainian army. The U.S. is going to do the same thing as well. European Union nations are probably not going to send fighter jets to Ukraine, despite a senior European Union official's vow that aircraft would be among the military aid the bloc promised, officials said. President Vladimir Zelensky of Ukraine repeated his plea with the European Union to admit his country on an emergency basis, admit the Ukraine to the European Union. The United States and other world powers decide, decided to release 60 million barrels of oil from their reserves, a move intended to reduce gasoline prices that have climbed rapidly in recent weeks, according to the International Energy Agency, which will help bring down the price per barrel because the price per barrel of gasoline increased 11 percent basically overnight. From Monday to Tuesday. Apple, Apple uh, computers and iPhones. Apple said it is pausing product sales in Russia and has and has limited other services within the country. Uh, OK, so read the rest of these updates here. We'll talk about this some more tomorrow show. This is a uh, live updates from The Washington Post. Moscow steps up assault on residential areas. Biden closes. U.S. airspace to Russian planes. All right. And then um, we'll go to what's the, oh, I'm going to go to this article here from Axios. So uh, this deals with um, leaders. Uh, decry reported mistreatment of Africans fleeing Ukraine. We, we've been talking about this the past couple of days also. And for those that, um, let me, let me, let me put this up here just a second here. Okay. We got this. Leaders decry reported mistreatment of Africans fleeing Ukraine. Uh, CNN had a, a good article on this also. So Don Lemon talked about this on CNN on Monday, on the show Monday night. For those that came in late and missed us talking about the NAACP's history and fighting lynch against lynchings, read this at NAACP.org, History of Lynching in America. White Americans use lynching to terrorize and control Black people in the 19th and early 20th centuries learn more about the history of this barbaric practice and how the NAACP worked to end lynching and fought against it, like the 1917 silent march and all this is his background information. NAACP was involved in... Uh, Gathering witnesses in the trial of uh, when when Emmett Till was killed. So it's a deep history behind that. Okay, now uh, this one right here. Which one is that? I want. Um, This one from uh, Axios.com. Uh, leaders decry reported mistreatment of Africans fleeing Ukraine. Uh, this is from uh, Tuesday. Uh, this is from uh, Tuesday, March 1st. Tuesday, March 1st from uh, Axios.com. President uh, Mohamedou uh, Bahari of Nigeria. We talked about him yesterday. African nations and U.S. civil rights leaders are condemning the reported mistreatment of Africans 
by Ukrainian authorities as they try to flee the nation amid Russia's invasion. Nigeria's government strongly criticized uh, reports and video and video images from its citizens and those from other African nations that they were being prevented from leaving and facing harsh treatment in neighboring Poland. So we've been talking about this, uh, talked about this on uh, the past two days. Nigerian President Mohamedou Bahari said in a tweet on Sunday, uh, Sunday, uh, February 27th, he said his government had received unfortunate reports of Ukrainian police and security personnel refusing to allow Nigerians to board buses and trains to Poland. He said there are also separate reports of a Polish officials simply refusing Nigerian citizens entry into Poland from Ukraine. He said roughly 4000 citizens from Nigeria, uh, from Nigerian and other uh, Nigeria and other African nations are stranded in Ukraine uh, because you have uh, African students who are there studying medicine, engineering, different things like this. OK, the college students, the NAACP, one of uh, the oldest uh, civil rights groups in the U.S., said Monday they reported uh, said Monday the reported mistreatment of black people in Ukraine was atrocious and reprehensible. Right now in Ukraine, black families, immigrants from the African diaspora and other people of color, mothers, children and students are not only facing challenges to evacuate a deadly war zone but are being pushed from trains and beaten by police officers and beaten by police officers end quote africans are being denied so jeffrey uh onayama um ha has taken has taken this up with the ukrainian ambassador he's the uh, minister of foreign affairs for nigeria he said Africans are being denied entry through the Ukrainian borders. Um, okay. The Polish border force told the BBC everyone fleeing, con fleeing a conflict in Ukraine was being welcomed into Poland regardless of nationality. We talked about this on yesterday's show. So President Mohamedou Bahari inst instructed Nigerians trying to get out to um he instructed them to go to hungary or romania <clears throat> he instructed them to go to hungary or romania which, which border um uh, ukraine because over 50 percent of the people fleeing ukraine are going into poland all right so it's over uh, uh 680,000 have fled Ukraine now over 50% are going into Poland. The number I heard early this morning on MSNBC was at least 360,000. Um, at least 360,000 have uh, gone into Poland. Okay, that's basically as of uh, March 1st, Monday morning, March 1st. Okay, televised reports have shown authorities prior prioritizing women and children on the limited trains uh, crossing the border. A few thousand black Ukrainians are believed to live in the country's major cities, though precise population numbers aren't available. Kimberly St. Julian Varnon, a history and, uh, and University of Pennsylvania doctoral candidate who studies black Ukrainians told Axios. Some are biracial, second or third generation Ukrainians with African fathers and white Slavic mothers. Others are first generation arrivals from African nations drawn by easy access to education. President Mohamedou Bahari said Nigerians and other Africans have a long history of studying 
in Ukraine, particularly medicine, particularly medicine. Uh, Zahan uh, Bel Belaniuk, an, an Olympic gold medalist serving as Ukraine's first black member of parliament, urged fellow countrymen last week to resist the Russian invasion. Belaniuk has spoken openly about the racism he's faced in Ukraine after bringing home the Greco-Roman middleweight gold, gold medal last year in the Tokyo Games. But experts say he and other black Ukrainians are expressing their loyalty to the country amid, amid fears they could become special targets for Russian occupiers. But experts say he and other black Ukrainians are expressing their loyalty to the country amid fears they could become special targets for Russian occupiers. Okay, so check out the uh, rest, check out the rest of this article here from Axios.com. Leaders decry reported mistreatment of Africans fleeing uh, Ukraine. Okay, and then um, there was a uh, CNN had an article also that I that I read earlier today. Um, because and and Don Lemon talked about this on CNN, the discrimination that uh, different Africans in uh, Ukraine were experiencing. So check this out also from uh, CNN.com. Um, foreign students fleeing Ukraine say they face segregation, racism at border. Foreign students fleeing Ukraine say they face uh, segregation, racism at border. This is from uh, March 1st, 2022. Okay, so you, they, they interview African medical students uh, okay, this uh, Rachel, Nigerian uh, first year medical student in Lviv was left stranded at the border town of uh, Chennai, some 400 miles from Ukraine's capital. One African medical student told CNN that she and other foreigners were ordered off the public transit. Ordered off the public transit. Um, at a checkpoint between Ukraine and the Poland border. She told CNN more than 10 buses, more than 10 buses came and we were watching everyone leave. We thought after they took all the Ukrainians, they would take us, but they told us we had to walk, that, that there were no more buses and told us to walk. She said, my body was numb from the cold and we haven't slept in about four days now. Ukrainians have been prioritized over Africans. This is something, uh, the piece from uh, People Magazine that we talked about yesterday. They talked about uh, Corinne Sky, 26 years old, who was interviewed by businessinsider.com. Uh, Corinne Sky is from, I think she's from Somalia. A uh, 26 year old medical student. She said the same thing. She said that they were prioritizing uh, Ukrainians. But um, here, uh, this sister also, uh, Rachel, she says that they were priori prioritizing Ukrainians. Uh, Ukrainians have been prioritized over Africans, men and women at every point. There's no need for us to ask why. We know why. I just want to get home. Uh, she told CNN in a telephone call Sunday as she waited in line at the border to cross into Poland. Okay, here's some uh, Africans here trying to get onto a bus. University students, including many from Nigeria, fleeing from the Ukrainian capital of Ky uh, Kiev, um, stole their, okay, so they're putting their luggage on. Uh, get on transportation bus near the Hungarian-Ukrainian border in the village of Tarpa in Hungary. 
Okay, this is from February 28th, 2022. Okay, so the allegations of violence as well, uh, as well that, we, that we've been talking about. So, uh, some of the Africans have made it to the final their final destination, whether in Romania or in the Poland or what have you, but it took days to do it oftentimes. All right, read the rest of this article here. We'll talk about this some more on tomorrow's show. Uh, foreign students fleeing. Foreign students fleeing Ukraine say uh, they face segregation, racism at border. All right, if you like this type of information, be sure to support the African History Network. Dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App. Dollar sign the K uh, dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App or through PayPal, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show. And uh, we'll post the uh, post information here. Is that our website also? African History Network.com, African History Network.com. We have six days a week. This helps us keep doing the research, stay on the air, keep broadcasting, pay some of the bills, etc. Sure to register for the uh, online classes I teach on uh, on Saturdays and Sundays. Ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Maafa. Understanding the transatlantic slave trade, where they didn't teach me in school. We deal with thousands of years of history and what leads up to the transatlantic slave trade taking place. You can uh, next next class is Saturday, March fifth. Saturday, March fifth, uh, two p.m. to four p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can use this information with your children also. I would say the content is PG-13. I do a PowerPoint presentation. We have book references, articles, video clips, um, all that. And then we do the sessions live. All the sessions are archived and recorded. You can go back and watch it anytime. So if you want to go back and watch the entire course a year from now, you can do that. We also have a bundle pack where you can register for both classes for $120. That's a $260 value. If you've taken any of my online classes before with me, I've been teaching them since 2017, email me at ahnshow at africanhistorynetwork.com and you'll get a 50% uh, discount, okay? Email me at ahnshow at africanhistorynetwork.com. Uh, you get a 50% discount. All right, we have to get out of here. Remember, at the African History Network, we focus on educating, empowering, and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world because right now it's correct wrong behavior it's not over till we win we're kind of forever we'll talk to you tomorrow the work that i do is larger than the fashion industry it's larger than the art world and i believe that i was born to bring newness into this world i'm kaima mcintyre i'm 24 years old and i'm an artist i create everything from paintings to jewelry design metaphysical jewelry to be specific and fashion design The only reason why my prom dress went viral is because people needed it. Within a few days of going viral, Notori Naughton reached out to me and she's like, I saw your dress, can you make me a dress? I was equally as shocked to be asked by a celebrity to design their dress at the age of 17. That's just one person and the list just continues to go on to Janet Jackson, to Tyra Banks. It really hits home. That means that the discussion is happening on the grounds in real time. The Business Scaling Challenge is a seven day online event that is taking place the week of March 13th through March 19th, 2022. This challenge will guide a group of business owners through scaling their businesses. Business owner Ronnie Sumler is hosting the Business Scaling Challenge in remembrance and honor of her father, the late civil rights activist Rodney Sumler. He helped a lot of African-American-owned businesses and local community leaders participate in politics. However, when he passed away, all of his ventures died with him. This inspired his daughter, Ronnie Sumler, to help community business owners preserve their businesses. Her business, Digital Dandelions, offers business Bibles to record business processes and procedures. 
Their business bibles are their branded run of show business manuals that have everything you need to run your business in one place. Their business scaling kit is the first step in creating a business bible. It includes everything needed to grow your business in one place. Join the Business Scaling Challenge Facebook group for more information and good luck in scaling your business. STEM Forward, helping our community find their place in the emerging fields of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Join us for our monthly live stream on our website, stemforwardedu.org. Watch, subscribe, share. Also join our mailing list to stay up to date with STEM resources and opportunities. STEM Forward, the future is now. Watch, subscribe, share. iRedify is a black-owned digital platform that showcases black and brown cultures and people. The books on the platform are written by African-American authors, Afro-Caribbean authors, African authors, and so much more. Kids 14 and under can read ebooks, listen to audiobooks, and complete learning activities. Kids can even write in the books digitally. Get unlimited access to everything on the platform for only $8.99 a month at iRedify.com. Sign up for your membership today. Abundant Capital Group is a real estate investment company with over 20 years of experience in real estate. They specialize in two areas of real estate. One, they solve real estate problems with creative financing solutions that give the seller the most money for their property, and two, they show individuals how to get a higher rate of return on their investment capital with Real Estate Note Investing. If you are looking to sell or need to sell your property, here is what they provide. Market value offer, even if you have little or no equity, they typically pay all closing costs, which can be thousands of dollars, they close on a date of the seller's choosing and the seller does not have to be out of the house at the time of closing. They take the property in an as-is condition and the seller is not required to make any repairs. Give them a call or email them today for a free consultation and see how they can help you with your real estate needs. Call them at 973-475-8488. That's 973-475-8488. Visit their website, AbundantCapitalGroup.com. That's AbundantCapitalGroup.com. And email them at ACG at AbundantCapitalGroup.com. Follow them on Instagram and Facebook at Abundant Capital Group. What does self-care mean to you? To us, it's an opportunity to reconnect with nature. A chance to create something remarkable. At Sage and Elm Apothecary, our handcrafted skin care and household products immerse you in Earth's sweetest nectar, connecting you to nature in a way you never imagined. See for yourself and visit us at sageandelmapothecary.com. Jeanette Davis is a well-established author with six published books. Black Survival in White America from Past History to the Next Century was published in 1995, and it delves into the history of African Americans before slavery up to contemporary times. The Great Divide Between Blacks and Whites was released in 2008, and her autobiography, Black Just Like My Mama, was published in 2010. Soulful Journey, The Business of Beings, was released in December 2021, and her two latest books, Echoes from the Heart, Love Throws Poetry, and Master Being Human, were both published in January of 2022. Jeanette Davis' writings delve deeply into 